Thank you. Good afternoon. Special shout out for today's entertainment, Heart Attack, a cappella group direct from the University of Hartford. What a terrific job. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jody Ambrosio, the radio voice of the UConn Men's Basketball National Champion, UConn Huskies, and assorted other UConn teams on WTIC News Talk 1080. And it is always a pleasure to be here at the JCC, especially for an event like this. This is a beautiful day in more than one way. Although not a cloud is in the sky, we have our own rainbow. Today is about the past meeting the present and what passion and commitment can do regardless of ability. Jonathan's dream was created in memory of Amy and Peter Barzak's son, Jonathan Peter Barzak, who passed away at nine months of age from a neuro, neuromuscular disease in 1995. Last month, more than 100 volunteers came together to help build this 25,000 square foot inclusive playground. They installed playground equipment and planted flowers, shrubs, and trees. Now the original Jonathan's dream built in 1996, was one of the very first truly inclusive playgrounds in America. As you will enjoy today, regardless of your age or ability, Jonathan's Dream features Kevin's Court, inclusive bank shot basketball court, donated by UConn coach Kevin Ollie's charity, Treehouse Village, airplane zip lines, Music Central, two small to fail play panels, and a wheelchair accessible labyrinth. Today is also about the 23-year journey of Jonathan's dream, about the goal to build it and they will play. Amy Jaffe Barzak represents both the beginning and the continuation of Jonathan's dream. Her story is compelling. Amy and her family are the co-founders of Jonathan's dream, one of America's very first inclusive playgrounds. Please welcome Amy Barzak and Robert Shoham, project manager. I want to start by thanking my partner in good, Ronit Shoham. <clears throat> we first started this endeavor to rebuild Jonathan's Dream in 2012. The new Jonathan's Dream didn't happen without the commitment, help, energy, and passion of so many people including many of you who are here today to help us celebrate. I want to start by thanking Shane's Inspiration. It's an international nonprofit organization based in Los Angeles, and they help communities build inclusive playgrounds like I used to do in my former role at Boundless Playgrounds. And they also do educational programming to help kids learn how to get to know and be friends with each other and understand the benefits of all of our different um, differences. I also want to celebrate the PAC Group, a construction management company based in Torrington, who, Torrington, am I right? who donated more than $100,000 worth of construction management services. Amazing. I also want to thank the amazing leaders, board members, and staff members of the Mandel Jewish Community Center. We couldn't have a better home. Thank you. Could I just ask all of those people I just mentioned to stand up, please? Just a, a, a moment of applause for all of you. Thank you. And if I could ask Terry Concrete and Harwington Paving and Artifacts, and the donors of all sizes who helped make this playground a possibility. Please stand and look at how we did this together. I want to celebrate all of you. Yes. And then just look behind us at the amazing entry arch that was done by John Sear and the rainbow sign that was lovingly restored by Artifacts. Thank you so much. In a few minutes, you're going to be hearing from some of the other people who are part of this story. And I want to celebrate that with you. In the meantime, I want to turn it over to my partner in good, Ronit Shoham. It has been a great journey. And I believe that with every journey in my life, I acquire incredible 
adventures, incredible experiences, and incredible people. And Amy is definitely an incredible lifelong friend that I've made through this five long, sometimes difficult, rewarding years. <laughs> Um, it was my pleasure to serve as the volunteer project coordinator for the rebuilding of Jonathan's dream. As Amy mentioned, it did not happen just by itself or with the two of us. We had a lot of help from a lot of wonderful people in this community. And I want to personally thank everybody that's here to support, to celebrate, that have supported us on this journey. Um, I would like also to thank the State Senator Beth Bai, who helped along with Bob Fishman to, and, and was very instrumental in securing the half a million dollar grant that we got from the state of Connecticut. Um, I would also like to um, thank the town of West Hartford, who have given us uh, $50,000 to rebuild Jonathan's dream. Um, and yes, everybody who has um, helped and donated and gave their time, their money, their everything to make this a reality. Thank you very much. On the inside of the fence, you will see our first attempt at a banner to recognize donors. We will be recognizing all donations of more than $500 on the permanent signage in Jonathan's Dream. If you can imagine with the greatest of dedication and heart how you can still make mistakes, which is why we have a banner up now instead of the permanent signage. But in spring of 2018, we will be doing that. So you will see on that sign donors of all those different sizes, but especially the Mandels, the Goldfarbs, and the Brown family, and so many more of you will be listed and thanked. Thank you so much. The original Jonathan's Dream came down in 2012, and Ronit and I worked for two years to get things going and to make it get started and to kind of get momentum. And it was exciting, but it was 20 years later and it was hard. And then in December of 2014, we had a press conference with Kevin Ollie and the Kevin Ollie Charity Classic, and we announced Kevin's Court coming to Jonathan's Dream. You will see it, you'll hear more about it, but that gave us some renewed energy and some renewed momentum, and I wanna thank everyone for that, especially Kevin Ollie and his entire team. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the Play Together song. Wait, did I forget something? No. <laughs> Is it the Play Together song? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, good. Okay. So, the Play Together song was written by a Grammy Award winning songwriter who was visiting Jonathan's dream more than 10 years ago. I had just finished telling him and his wife, who was my goddaughter, about a little girl in a wheelchair sadly watching the other kids play on a playground she couldn't get to or play on. And just then, in that moment, there was a little girl in a wheelchair by the slide, and another child came over and said, will you play with me? So literally, in that moment, what Jonathan's dream was all about happened in front of our eyes. And then literally, Josh spoke stanza by stanza the song that you are about to hear. And my goddaughter Carly sang it back to him. So here you have the Barzak family singers, so my children, Daniel, Alyssa, and Michael, and my kind of adopted son, Michael Steiner, who are going to sing Play Together. Thank you so much and enjoy. For today's special grand opening rendition, we'd love to have my mom and dad come stand up here with us.
big slide Sat a side child In a wheelchair all alone And my heart stopped As her quiet teardrops Fell down one by one Tremendous. Thank you very much. What an inspiring song. Uh, before we move on, we'd like to thank our interpreter, Heidi Catlin from the University of Connecticut, and our official photographer today, Amy Summers. I'll be really honest, I would have liked to see you at the football field yesterday at the end of the game when Coach Edsel was using some language towards the officials that we normally don't hear. But it's all good since the Huskies won. It's always a good day when the Huskies win. Uh, we have some dignitaries that I would like to recognize. One of them has already been mentioned, our outstanding state senator, Beth Bai. <laughs> state representative and my former colleague at NBC Connecticut, Derek Slap. <laughs> the deputy mayor of West Hartford, Leon Davidoff. <laughs> Probate judge Owen Egan. <laughs> Town councilor Ben Weigrab. The governor's liaison through the disability community, Jonathan Slifka. And our next speaker, UConn trustee and the outstanding mayor of our town, the Honorable Sherry Cantor. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Wow, what a special day this is. This is a, an incredible celebration of dedication, commitment, love and community and i am so honored to be with all you i am i'm brimming with pride um, for what was accomplished um, 23 years ago and what was reaccomplished in a more inclusive and even better way by even more touches in the community and i i'm, I'm just so thrilled um, i have a proclamation to present but before i do that 
Um, I just actually came from Boston this morning. It was my son's 21st birthday yesterday. And um, he was born in 1996 with complex congenital heart disease and had three open heart surgeries before he was two years old. And I remember the first time he was recovering from heart surgery and I had three older sons that were very active and wanted to play. And the more we were cooped up in the house, the more energy they had. So we came to Jonathan's dream and I was able to let everybody play. And it was a very eye-opening experience for me having three children that didn't necessarily need accommodations um, to be able to play in a place where other children weren't able to access uh, the ability to play and that all changed um, and everybody could play together and what an amazing amazing thing thank you to the barzacks and mr steiner and steiner for sharing all of that beautiful music and josh for writing that beautiful song it touched all of us we were crying on, on under the tent here um there's a quote that uh uh, you know that I wanted to uh, share uh, this was actually from Helen Keller She said the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched They must be felt and that's what I am feeling today I am feeling this sense of warmth and community and acceptance uh, And uh, again, I am so proud of my dear friend Amy and uh, the whole Barzak family and and Ronit the volunteer You know some people say volunteers. We don't pay them because they're not worth much or something well, volunteers are priceless. That's why we don't pay them. So that's who I would thank. So now on to our town's proclamation. It's a little smaller than the states. Beth and I were comparing, so I apologize for that. But whereas the health and vitality of a community is reflected in the participation of its citizens in those activities that further the strength of the town, and whereas the original Jonathan's Dream, inspired by the Barzak family of West Hartford and built in 1996 as the first boundless playground, created an inclusive, accessible place, space for families and children of all abilities. And whereas Jonathan's Dream quickly became a mecca for children of all abilities, and its peak, at its peak, Jonathan's Dream saw carloads of children arriving through its rainbow entrance to an expansive, imaginative playscape and whereas Time Magazine wrote an article about Jonathan's dream, and soon hundreds of requests poured in from individuals, organizations, schools, and nonprofits interested in creating an inclusive playground for their own communities, and whereas the playground was closed due to safety concerns in the spring of 2013, and whereas plans to modernize the playground was supported by the community, and the new Jonathan's Dream will extend its legacy with an engaging playground that keeps children of all ages and abilities active and moving. Now therefore be it proclaimed that on behalf of the town council, the residents of West Hartford, I, Mayor Sherry G. Cantor, do hereby celebrate the grand reopening of Jonathan's Dream Reimagined and extend best wishes and gratitude to the Dream Team, sponsors, volunteers, and attendees. Thank you so much. It truly was a team effort. I just also want to give a very, very special shout out and thank you to Coach Ali for starting this whole thing back with so much um, incredible energy and, um, and credibility, actually, to, to get this started. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, now, she's already been promoted, so we'll bring her up right here, our State Senator, Beth Bai. Mine are a little bigger, um, but I'll, I'll hold on those and, and just have a, a few brief words. Um, what a community we live in. How about this today, people? So many of you were out here, and the message of that sends about what's important in our community, that we're a community for all, is really something. And um, the JCC, thank you so much for sponsoring this. This is Giving upon giving, I saw Joyce Mandel and I think Mandel JCC and I think all that they do and then hosting this great playground, um, it's about giving. The moment I want to reflect on with you is uh, Amy and Ronit invited me to the build and I was a very big player, let me tell you, they were indulging me. Uh, there was a lot going on. But the most touching moment for me, Amy, was being with your children and watching your children put together signs and dig holes 
all together because of the model that you've given them. And to me, that's a microcosm of the model that you and Onit and your kids are going to pass on for generations to come. I remember Daniel and Brittany's kindergarten class at Norfelt and bringing my children here as well, as, as Mayor Cantor said. So thank you for helping us build such a great community. One person I have to mention is Brian Becker, because he was a state representative when we were going for this bond. And um, I might have been the fullback throwing some blocks. And Brian had the ball, and he was not letting go till we got across the um, foul line. That's a woman talking about football. I hope that's OK. Uh, talking about routes. Yeah, OK. Um, for the state of Connecticut, I hope you'll agree, this is a great investment. This is a great investment. We are a wonderful state. We have a great quality of life. People move here for our schools and for what we offer to all. And I see so many children here who are going to have fun in, in just a second. So I just want to also make sure I use my time to honor uh, Bernice Shoham and Amy Barzak. I've had many meetings with you with charts and pictures and long before this was true. And this was a whole bunch of weeds. You two believed this was going to happen again. So I have two citations from the state of Connecticut. One for each of you thanking you for making sure that all children can play and use their abilities, because every child has abilities, and this playground spotlights those. So. And now, um, on to the joy. I know Kevin Ollie's here. Kevin, I don't know if you know this, but my sister cared for your baby uh, when he was in the NICU at UConn. And when you were still playing, she said to me, Beth, this is the most special man. He's the most incredible father. He's so busy, he's playing basketball, but he always comes, and his children are always first. And a lot of kids come out of the NICU who need this kind of care. And so I bet it has some special meaning for you. So thank you uh, for your help kicking this off. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. All right, next, her name has just been mentioned, so we'll bring her up, the past president of the Mandel Junior Jewish Community Center, my friend Joyce Mandel. Thank you. Okay, it is a fabulous crowd we have here today and a wonderful day and of course special, special love goes out to the Barzak family for sure. So it was 19, excuse me, it was 1995 when Amy approached the board of directors of the Jewish Center. She had a concept to build an accessible playground. It was my first year as president. Jay Leipzig was executive director. Accessible playground. What does that even mean? I don't think that we have ever heard the word before. Well, Amy said it means that children of all abilities can play together. Okay, I asked, but what differentiates an accessible playground from any other? We have Fern Park, it's close. Tennis, tennis courts, a pond, picnic tables, they're all available. Everything is accessible. Amy quietly stopped for a moment and she simply stated, not if you're a child in a wheelchair. And that was the beginning of the JCC taking the important step to understand the Barzak's totally out of the box desire to build a playground in honor of their son, Jonathan, who had he lived, could not join his brother, Daniel, in any playground in our community or for that matter, anywhere, unless the playground was located on the campus of a children's hospital. And so after much research, Amy suggested the two of us take a road trip to visit an accessible playground located at Boston College. And as we drove to Boston, Amy chatted away about what our tour of this amazing playground would be. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to tell her. I had a lot of doubts about whether this could ever happen. As we drove into the college, we could see the colorful flags waving atop the treehouse roofs. We sat on a swing with two benches and a floor large enough to accommodate a wheelchair. We witnessed the joy of a little boy who could transfer from his wheelchair to a swing set. And we sat, on a, sat at our first elevated sandbox. At that time, Andy's mom was in a wheelchair. 
And I realized that if we ever had grandchildren, she would have a very difficult time joining us at any playground. The fact that our JCC campus included the Hebrew Home and Hospital, it just seemed maybe there was a possibility that it could be a great fit for a partnership. Amy and I returned home and shortly after met with our board and presented the concept of building an accessible playground on our campus. The board voted unanimously to encourage the Barzacs to move forward to raise the necessary funds to build Jonathan's dream. The Hebrew Home and Hospital Board agreed and voted unanimously to lease this property to the JCC for $1 so that we could have a new home and that would be called Jonathan's Dream. The orientation of the property was perfect. The Barzacs were successful in their fundraising efforts and the first totally accessible playground in the world was completed. Our niece, Amy Charlson, who grew up in Simsbury, now lives and works in Chicago as a graphics designer, created the logo, which includes the elderly gentleman. It was both a giant leap of faith and a phenomenal opportunity for our JCC board to vote yes and to share in assisting the Barzacs to realize their dream. It became the dream of our JCC and in the years to come, the dream of many communities across our country and around the world. And here we are. We're about to celebrate a reimagined Jonathan's dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Joyce. Today is also about courting hope because every child deserves a shot. Winning a national championship on the court is hard enough, but doing it in a wheelchair with a disability takes it to an entire, entirely new level. Coach Kevin Holly, inspired by athletes with disabilities, wants to give every child a shot regardless of their abilities. And it's not just his skill as a basketball coach that makes him a wonderful man, it's this dream as well. Please welcome our head men's basketball coach at the University of Connecticut, Kevin Holly. I'm not cool as Joe D, so I don't have no sunglasses, so uh, bear with me. And, of course, Beth, you can talk about football. This, I'm not Cam Newton or anybody, so as long as you're not talking about the Cowboys, we all right. We all right. Don't talk bad about the Cowboys. But, um, Heidi, I wish I can use you also. Um, sometimes my players don't understand what I'm saying a lot of times. They want to do their own thing, so... Maybe you can help explain when we need to win another national championship and we can take care of that. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. This is a great, great opportunity for me. Um, I remember we started this uh, 2014, and I was just talking to Jay. I was like, man, that time just flies. Um, I just didn't even remember it was 2014 that we made the pledge. And we didn't see the weeds in this, this, this playground. We seen the possibilities. Um, and a lot of people see the dry bones, but we speak life in dead situations. And the power um, of life is death is in the power of the tongue. So whenever you see a dead situation in your life, you see a dead situation anywhere, you can speak it into, you can speak it into existence. And this is a, a dream that, that came true, but a dream is not when you're just sleeping. You know, the best dreamers are the ones that dream when they're awake. And this is a testament to everybody that's sitting under this tent um, that we're dreaming while we're awake and we're going to make a difference. And the biggest and the most greatest commodity in the world is not oil, it's not anything like that. It's about what you give back to others. Because uh, I just really want y'all to understand this, it never lose value. It never lose value. So I just want to thank Amy. Um, the Barzak family for, for this wonderful dream and continue the great uh, success that you have and I'm committed to stand right behind it. Um, to win at any level, regardless of ability, it takes commitment. Jonathan Dream is a story about commitment. So inspired by the commitment of athletes with disabilities uh, and by the drive of Amy Barzak, I'm proud to support Jonathan Dreams and bring Kevin Courts as a gift to this community. So I want everybody really to enjoy it. Um, I think me and Sherry, we're going to have a shoot off, off over here. So um, I got to get stressed out and get ready. Um, I don't like to lose at anything. I'm very competitive. So um, everybody knows that. But Kevin Courts is all about giving every child a shot. I mean, everyone. And we talk about 
um, accessible basketball courts, accessible playgrounds. It's exclusive. Um, everybody's able to be a part of this. So I want y'all really want y'all to understand that. Kevin Course is a project of my golf tournament, Kevin Ollie's Charity Classic. All the proceeds go back to, to athletes with disabilities. Um, and we're trying to help make this world a very different place and give everybody an opportunity to do everything that they hard imagine. Um, with Jonathan Dream, we now have four Kevin courts across our state. Um, I'm very proud of that. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful one. Um, I want everybody to use it. I look forward to coming out here and watching the kids play. Um, through my hectic season, uh, through the stress, through the ups and downs, through the wins and losses, um, I can always come uh, to Kevin Courts and see the kids playing. So with all that stress, it's also opportunity to say, man, I'm making a difference. Um, with all the negativity sometimes that swirl around this world, I just want everybody to know to focus on the positive things. Focus on, you know, getting up every day and having a breath in your lungs to breathe. Um, this is truly a blessing to wake up each and every day. And uh, like I said before I started, and I want to close with this, is any dead situation you see, and I, I really want this to hit home, you can speak life to it. Uh, this is a possibility that happened. Like I said, in 2014, it was weeds all over this place. Um, but nobody under this tent, nobody in this community seen one weed. We seen children playing, uh, just like the dream saying, play together and see them laughter out loud. That's what we saw. And uh, thank you for all the community. Thank you for all your support. We have this dream alive. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Now, how great is Kevin Ollie? You know, there's not another coach in the country, FBS uh, basketball or football, who would admit that their play-by-play -play guy is cooler than the head coaches. It's amazing. More, you got that on tape. We're going to run that on NBC Connecticut tonight. As you'll see, Kevin's court at Jonathan's Dreams has 10 truly unique stations. The station structures were created by Bank Shop, which pioneered inclusive play basketball structures. You will find instructions for how to play Bank Shot on the fence. This Kevin's Court is funded by Kevin Ali Charity Classic and its charity, the 21st Century Talent Fund. Kevin's charity helps support 22,000 athletes with disabilities in 22 programs across our state. Although there are now four Kevin's Courts in Connecticut, this Kevin's Court is special in Kevin's heart as it was the first Kevin's Court ever funded. Kevin's Court is more than building a court, it's about creating inclusive support programs. Now as part of Kevin's commitment, we've teamed up with the Ryan Martin Foundation to host a series of inclusive sports clinics at the Kevin's Court at Jonathan Stream. Ryan, thank you, and Coach, thank you as well for all you do, and obviously we're hoping for a great season this year, which begins with an exhibition game on Wednesday night at the Mohegan Sun to benefit charity um, hurricane relief by the Red Cross. Now let's welcome Tiffany Harris, co-founder and CEO of Shane's Inspiration, based in L.A., and her remarkable commitment to designing Jonathan's Dream. Good afternoon. I just want to start by saying to the children that are so patiently waiting to play, there's only a few more of us. Uh, then you're going to get to hit the ground and play on this extraordinary playground. Um, this is an amazing full circle moment for us because 20 years ago, we had the extraordinary good fortune uh, to learn about Amy Barzak and the work that she was doing here with Jonathan's Dream and Boundless Playgrounds. Um, when Scott and Catherine were still grieving the loss of their son Shane, who passed from spinal muscular atrophy as well, um, someone sent an article to them and that was written about this extraordinary work um, that Amy was involved in. And Amy and Catherine connected and a dream was launched of our own in Los Angeles. And you can't imagine when you look at one of these playgrounds, it seems like once it's done, it just seems like, how hard could it be? Uh, <laughs> and every single inch of one of these playgrounds has been thought through, not only for children who may have mobility challenges, 
for children with sensory processing disorders, for a spectrum of disabilities and a spectrum of abilities this design is created. And so I want to do a shout out to Diane Scanlon, Diane, and um, who is our landscape architect and director of design. And, and we had the privilege of working with Amy and Ronit and this community to get underneath their vision and help them realize that. And it was a, a great honor to be able to give back because when we, when we started and we had a presentation the next morning and we were up at midnight and Amy was deep asleep at three in the morning on this coast, Amy would wake up and take our calls and she would help support us every step of the way until we were able to realize the opening of Shane's Inspiration. And then beyond that, we became our own organization. And we're now working throughout the world, um, really still inspired every single moment by Jonathan and by the work that you're doing, Amy. And I, I need to correct something you said up here. You underplay so much of who you are and so much of what you've contributed to this world and how you've just opened it up for all children of all abilities, beyond the fact that they can play, that, they, that they're honored, that they're honored as equal that you created common ground for them. And in every single moment of the work that we do, in every single moment of every other organization that really was born from this, is Jonathan's life and Jonathan's spirit and the spirit of the Barzak family and this community. And I want to say thank you for that. And I also, um, I want to acknowledge Brad Thornton, who's our Director of Project Development, who worked very closely on this project. I'm not sure where you are, Brad, but thank you so much to Brad and Diana. And, um, and I want to acknowledge Kevin Thurm, who's the President of the Clinton Foundation, who came here from New York to be with this community, as well as Patty Miller and Jane Park Wu from Too Small to Fail, who ensure that every playground that we design has early childhood literacy components. Um, for children zero to five. So thank you so much for being here. And I want to close with one of our favorite quotes by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small, thoughtful group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So to this extraordinary, thoughtful group of committed citizens, congratulations. I'll begin by thanking the wonderful Barzak family. Uh, for making it possible for all of us to be here today in this incredible playground in honor of Jonathan. We at the Foundation truly appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this very special memorial project that we know brings so much joy and laugh to the children and families in this community for years to come. I'd also like to thank Mayor Kanner, uh, Coach Ali, uh, everyone at the Mandel JCC, um, and everybody else, Senator By, and everyone else who had a hand in uh, creating uh, this playground and bringing the project to life. In addition, I'd like to thank uh, Tiffany Harris, uh, Brad Thornton, and Diane uh, from Shane's Inspiration for your partnership um, through the past three years, uh, which has helped promote meaningful, language-rich parent-child interactions through inclusive playgrounds all across our country. We're deeply grateful for that. Thank you. This effort is part of Two Smalls to Fail, Talking is Teaching, campaign, which is designed to raise awareness about how critical the early years are for children's and for a children's brain and language development, and to empower parents, parents and caregivers with tools to talk, read, and sing with their children from the day they're born. Our aim is to make small moments big among parents, educators, and young children, and provide opportunities to, uh, where these moments can happen more often during everyday routines. We work through local trusted messengers like pediatricians, faith leaders, along with business and community leaders to weave our messages into the fabric of communities across the country. We also like to meet parents where they are, providing them with information about early, ch early childhood development and resources, whether it's a laundry mat, the diaper bank, the grocery store, or the playground. We're grateful to have the opportunity to share our message with parents in such a pl special playground as Jonathan's dream reimagined. And we're honored to have the chance to celebrate his life through Let's Talk About Nature, a parent-child conversation panel, and some of the Baby Beluga and nature-themed children's books we're distributing here today.
today. We believe all children deserve to have the best possible start in school and in life, and this playground represents a place where children of all abilities can come together to play, learn, and thrive. Thank you again. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I know you're going to be heartbroken at this next statement, but we are now done with the speeches. We have planned a unique opening ceremony. First, we will open Jonathan's dream with a special ribbon cutting. But, see, Jonathan's dream is not fully completed. Still one piece missing. That is the net on Kevin's court. And since I was never a good enough athlete to cut down a net, I get to hold it up here. The net on Kevin's court right after the ribbon cutting ceremony Join Kevin Alley as we do a ceremonial net hanging. After the ceremonies, kids from the Women's Advancement Initiative's lead program will be positioned throughout Jonathan's Dream to introduce you to this wonderful playground. Amy, her family, friends, and supporters started on this journey to rebuild Jonathan's Dream five years ago. For many, this journey started 23 years ago with the birth of Jonathan. As we look towards the future, we still want to reflect the past and what the original Jonathan's, Jonathan's dream has meant. Please welcome Rabbi Jim Rosen for a special benediction. Thank you, wonderful Barzak family. Thank you, Ronit. Thank you, JCC. Thank you all. I'd like to offer this closing meditation and prayer, if I might. Sur Yisrael ve'elohei haruchot. God of Israel and indeed creator of us all, we are overwhelmed with gratitude, not only for the attainment of this marvelous milestone in the reopening of Jonathan's dream, but of the spirit of overflowing generosity and determination that underlies this beautiful project. Here we see the fullest glory of an expression from the Bible. Coach Ali referred to two biblical passages. I will refer to a third. Let kindness and truth come together, and indeed justice and peace come forward to kiss each other. The truth, the truth that all children are entitled to the joys of play, that all human beings are created in God's image, that all people are entitled to lives of meaning and purpose. And the kindness, it is the kindness that lies before us, that builds upon that truth, and this we are now privileged to enjoy and to reopen. May this special place inspire us all to make other places, places of learning and business and recreation, places of inclusion and joy as well. We say amen and thank you so much. As part of the opening ceremony, we want to pay honor to the original Jonathan Dream. So we have here today soil from the original ground upon which Jonathan's Dream stood. We now ask Amy and her family to add that original dirt to the new Jonathan's dream. Amy, thank you. And to the Barzak family, thank you. After a long and wonderful journey that started 23 years ago, today we can all play the dream again. Right now I'd like to invite children who have been selected to participate in the ribbon cutting to assemble under the rainbow arch. Speakers, please join them under the rainbow arch. Chase Lopes has perhaps the biggest pair of scissors ever under the arch. Almost. Got a few more in.
and then we're going to start. 